like to think that I'm maturing up to a point in my life where looks aren't everything. When, fuck it, that's bullshit. <laughs> uh, looks are a lot of things. <laughs> You can you can suck on a fag and and jump on the air, be on my show. I'm down. That'll be my first time. <laughs> I'm gonna turn you out, dude. <laughs> I'm scared too. I, I'm. I honestly am. I'm fucking scared to be alone for the rest of my life. But you know what? It's better off than being fucking miserable with somebody just because I'm afraid to be alone. Well, thank you for tuning in to Sink or Swim. My name is Wes Rodriguez, and this is the Wednesday Show. Well, it's midweek. And I hope you guys are making it fine. I'm riding this bitch till the wheels fall off, goddammit. And my levels sound like shit. Ambrosio, what's wrong with my levels, fool? Fix that shit, eh? This ain't no fucking ghetto podcast, eh? All right, that sounds better, fool. Gracias, carnal, princess. Well, it's been some time since I've checked in with uh, my friend Chris Teagarden, and uh, I think I'll just randomly drop him a phone call and test out recording a phone conversation. See how that works for the show. So here we go. D Dog. What are you doing, fool? Can I put you on the air? What, are you stuck on a fag? <laughs> what? I'm about to suck on a fag right now. You're about to suck on a fag? Yeah. Well, let me get over there. I did. <laughs> oh, shit. Good stuff. You can, you can suck on a fag and, and jump on the air. Be on my show. I'm down. That'll be my first time. <laughs> I'm going to turn you out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> you'd turn me in. <laughs> yeah, I'll turn you cauliflower. <laughs> Let you know me, what broccoli and anal sex have in common? What do broccoli and anal sex have in common? You don't know. Oh, you have too much of it, and your asshole will look like broccoli. No, if you were, if, if, if you didn't like it as a child, probably not gonna like it as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's wrong. That's fucked up. Well, I certainly didn't like broccoli as a child. You like it now? No, I don't like it now. Oh, oh I was about to, I was about to fight you over. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Are you actually putting me on the air right now? I am. Oh, that's crazy style. I'm, 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 I'm talking pizza dough. And it's not a sexual innuendo. Well, I, I uh, actually just wanted to test it out, but um, so far it's been good, and I'll probably air that. But uh, I haven't recorded a phone call. There's a lot of background noise, but I can still hear you pretty clear. Well, it's awesome if you get that technology down, dude, because uh, it's going to open up many, many windows. Dude, the fucking... I, it's fucking brilliant, my technology. It's fucking uh, an iPhone and a rubber band and a microphone. Well, dude, the rubber band ain't no joke because there's a reason they don't make them. What? <laughs> what? You should try zip ties. Those things are tough. This is the wrong time to do it. I'm kid's birthday, dude. We're having a dinner right now. Oh, right. Okay. I just wanted to ask you a few questions. You got a minute? I got a quick minute, yeah. All right. Do you watch The Walking Dead? Oh, okay. I am not. I finally, I, last time I talked to you, I hadn't seen an episode. Now I've seen every one ever made. I've, I've only seen the ones up on uh, Netflix, so I think I'm two seasons behind on Sons. Yeah, they're about to come out with season four on Netflix. Okay. And you haven't seen season five, so. Yeah, last thing I saw, the uh, the federal agent got killed. Oh, yeah, after they killed, after they, after they uh, killed Jimmy O, 
on, on, on the Riverwood Ranch Road. Oh, that was Riverwood Ranch? Yeah, dude, that big hill they're coming down when they did the train for Jim Hill. Well, I've seen Riverwood Ranch. I've seen Tahunga, the uh, the old karate store off of uh, right near uh, fucking Roscoe. Uh, I don't know, but my buddy says that he knows in San Fernando where the club is. The mechanic shop, the clubhouse. That's in San Fernando? It's in San Fernando, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. But I have not seen Walking Dead. Everybody keeps telling me to get into it. So Fucking, it, so. you have to, dude. Season one and I two are up. I watched 20 minutes of the first episode. I was like, eh. And I turned it off, but I'll, I'll try to get back into it. Dude, that last shot of him in the tank and the fucking, the camera panning up above that tank and you see just thousands of zombies coming in at him. Fuck, you didn't watch no, enough. Did. You gotta watch that, bro. All right, I just wanted to pick your brain about that and, uh, Maybe talk some Lakers, but I don't want to wrap you up. I'm actually watching Lakers game right now. Dude. I have five more. Fuck you, dude. Dish Network. I can't even watch fucking Walking Dead. Fuck Dish Network in their neck bone, dude. (laughs) Yeah, and that fucked me. I can't tell what the score is because the broadcast says Jazz 11, Lakers, and then it's cut off. Oh. This is a preseason, though, right? This is the second preseason game. The first one was two days ago versus the Jazz, and they lost. And it's the second one. The problem is that Howard's still injured. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's not playing yet. He'll be only playing in the season, but he's not going to play in the preseason. Okay. How does uh, Nash look? Nash is a man, dude. He'll never look bad. I fucking hate Nash, bro. But now that he's a Lakers, he's all right, dude. Dude, he's the best point guard in the NBA. It has been for a decade, bro. His, his game needed to be a little bit more sexy until he joined the Lakers. And then it's it's acceptable. Oh, yeah, it's cool. Everybody's a part of the world for both of <laughs> Him and fucking uh, uh, Tim Duncan are like totally the same in my opinion. Fuck their game is so boring to watch. I would hate to have them as the main guy on my team. Nash is a little smart and he's a great shape. He's probably the best shape of the NBA player. And he's one of the oldest. But he's... He can real seriously. He's brilliant and he makes it. He makes points go up on the board. But watching well, him play, he's it's... He's a point guard, dude. So he's bringing the ball up and he's running the plays. He's going to be the smart one, dude. Right, but you when know, that's why, and that's why that's why Fisher was a great point guard, but he was old, man. He just he wasn't fast enough anymore. Right. And they got that what was that lady was name? Uh, uh, Sessions. Yeah, I thought he was gonna fucking pull it in and, and join the team and actually uh, put a good performance on, but he kind of uh, he kind of dwindled off. He he didn't step up to the plate. Two years ago, I was trying to get Ali to make me a T-shirt where the front said sit Fisher down. In the back, say, play Shannon Brown. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Hey, so how old is your son now? Eight. Eight years old. Uh-huh. Do you remember when you were eight years old, Chris? <laughs> yeah. And trying to... uh <laughs> Be the, the lifeguard of the family, make sure everybody was fucking not nodding out into their fucking SpaghettiOs. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, um, fucking. Okay, do that. All right, brother. Good to talk to you. Late. Well, everybody, The Walking Dead has premiered. Season three, episode one was everything and more that any fan could have wanted. I, I, I have to I have to admit, though, that last season kind of slowed down. They spent way too much time at the farm. But arguably, the slow burn is not bad. So on the other hand, it's only because of how movie fans have become spoiled from instant gratification that... Anybody would even consider criticizing how The Walking Dead was slowed down and they, they weren't delivering. I remember when Alien premiered, it took forever to get to the to the monster. 
You know, you're seeing a lot of suspense, a lot of buildup, you know, like a like a long fuse connected to a huge pile of dynamite. And right when when they finally chose the right time, the, the big giant payoff, the huge reveal of the alien finally entering into the into the movie, you were so ready for it. You know, it was like like you have blue balls and you finally just fucking shot your wad with big roping belts of semen. <laughs> coding the screen like holy shit finally the fucking the the, the hero and the villain get to duke it out <laughs> so it's kind it i have to admit i am spoiled i didn't feel like they could have they could have fluffed up season two a little bit right in the middle as long as they keep putting this show together i'm i'm on board from what i know reading the book that this story can go on for a long time. They've got seasons. They've got at least nine seasons of material, at least. And if they do, if if they play it with a slow burn, then it's only going to extend it. So as long as they don't fucking pull something like Deadwood and just cut it off right before they they just leave you hanging without finishing off the story or or, or ending things with with some kind of resolve. Because I've had enough disappointment. <laughs> I've had enough disappointment in my life. I've had enough <laughs> build up with no delivery. So <laughs> when it comes to my escape from reality, please, please follow through. Anyhow, in the season two finale, where they ended the show with that sweeping shot as they back away from the group. And then they, then you see the prison. That was a great teaser. And it, and it just piqued your curiosity, wondering where it could go, you know, what possibly could happen and why are they showing the prison? I've said it before on the podcast that uh, I'm reading the, the comic book as well. I'm reading the graphic novel, actually. Collecting it from issue number one would be way too expensive because it has skyrocketed in value. So I just read the graphic novels and I'm far into the story, but uh, I'd look forward to every episode on television wondering what the differences are going to be. And uh, they're taking few avenues away from the comic, but they're definitely satisfying the fan base though on, on what they're showing on TV. So I'm super satisfied with what's going on and what they've done. Everything that you had missed, they paid off how slow things were going in season two with episode one of season three. It was fucking awesome. Little Carl is a fucking badass. I really love his character. Andrew Lincoln put on a great performance. Rick Grimes looks like he's so worn out from the road, and he's desperate just to find a place for the group to settle down. There was so much action and so much gore. It was so satisfying, and they moved the story right along. They moved them right into the prison. They didn't They didn't slow burn it like, like with the farm. So I'm really excited to see how far it's going to go. And how much we're going to get to see the story develop. And uh, a few things, though, that I noticed. I, I, it, it's frustrating to see Daryl just shooting down Carol when she seems like she's she just want to get some of that sausage, man. Some of that fucking white trash sausage. And uh, he's he's being so tight, dude. It's fucking he's not portraying what a biker would be like. He would have handled that. <laughs> But yeah, that the sexual frustration between those two, yeah, something's gonna happen there. And spoilers, when they when they chopped off Herschel's leg right at the the end of the season opener, there was it was a tremendous sense of satisfaction. Like, okay, we're they're they're moving it right along. They're getting right into the story and they're going for the juicy part. So it was very cool to see them progressing and, and uh, staying true to the comic book. I can't wait to see what they're going to bring into this season. So if anybody out there is denying themselves the pleasure of The Walking Dead, fucking slap yourself in the face, get a running start, and run. Like, okay, nearest waist-high parking pylon because you are missing out. Anybody that I talk to about the show is like, yeah, well, I hear people talking about it. Yeah, you're going to hear people talking about it. It's going to go down in history. It's fucking the budget. They are not holding back when it comes to the zombies. Michonne's zombies look so good. And (laughs) when you see her walking them with the leashes and (laughs) using them as mules, it's fucking brilliant. You know, it's so awkward. It's fucked up to see 
<laughs> humans being used that way, but they're zombies and, and you kind of you're celebrating the fact that these zombies are dying. You know, you kind of feel bad. And at the beginning, you could see how torn they were emotionally to, to be killing the zombies because they were the, the memory of them being human is is so fresh but now that they've been out living in the shit for so long that they're <laughs> getting a twisted sense of excitement while they're taking out each zombie so it's fucking cool the show is damn good man so if anybody out there hasn't tuned in to walking dead please do so you will be aggressively rewarded and moving on ambrosio this is it's it's still fucking driving me crazy man the levels are all screwed up man while they're t- I, th- I think i can fix it oh, oh. i think i can fix it just once all right yeah that's wait i mean it that's a little better is all right it is right here okay i think i got it get it <laughs> please I think I can fix it. mm-hmm Breathing. I think I has a problem. I think I know what it is. It's right here. Everything is, everything is be okay. Just a second. And that is correct, sir. That is correct. Is that better? I don't know if that's it's better. It's just a second. I'm All right. Do you have it? it? Losing patience. Get to it. Let me try something. Okay. Having it be beautiful in just one second. If I don't kill you first. There we go. Yes. Is that better? Okay. I start talking now. Tell me if you. Tell me if it's better. Wow. What the. F- the fuck happened there? I don't know where's th- Oh shit. What the fuck is this? Pro Tools ESP error? He says it's an error. Get down. Oh my god. Did that record? My- Pro Tools is reading my thoughts and it's recording them. This can't be good. Pro Tools ESP error. My recording program has the ability to read, has the ability to record what I'm thinking. Yeah. I didn't want to be afraid of exposing my thoughts and feelings, but this is, this is going to be too much. What the fuck did you do, Ambrosio? Okay, asshole. <laughs> Oops. Don't be mean. I'm not sure what it is. I'm trying to freeze it right now. That, oh, how embarrassing for you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> To say the fucking least, it's embarrassing for me. And by the way, why the fuck aren't your thoughts getting recorded? That's true, because you might find out that I could be the solution to all of your problems. You wouldn't be taking no thoughts like, could I sell my own tea? Not if you live with me. You wouldn't be so damn essentially frustrated. Yeah. All right, Ambrosio. Let's fucking stick to the fucking sound effects and the technicals. Just run the board and get to the bottom of this little fucking problem we got. Thank Christ. Error fixed. That was becoming a little too revealing. Um, yeah, so... Fuck it. I'll just leave it in. Yeah. 
I guess that'll add a little twist to the show. If uh, that error comes up, then uh, fuck it. At least you guys can appreciate it. And those are the inner workings of my brain. Fuck it. Yeah, right. Fuck it. I'm leaving it in. I'm fucking... I'm leaving it in! Okay. They can't you see. What you yelling at anyway? You got that, Ambrosio? Leave it in. You better not be yelling at me. I'll fucking walk. I'll just take my things and I will just leave No, it. no. <laughs> no, Ambrosio. Sorry, I just got a little excited. Um, I'm feeling all right. I'll just be honest. I'm feeling a little vulnerable. No, don't don't take this personal. It's it's me. It's not you. And uh, we're just gonna move on. We're gonna pretend like nothing happened, and uh, no one heard any of those mental thoughts. And uh, yeah, let's let's just move on. Yeah, that's that's what we're gonna do. And uh, you know what? I'm just gonna just gonna change the subject here, and I'm gonna bring up some. Uh, fuck it. Let's while while things are being revealed, let me just be more honest. How about a recap, folks? I mentioned, I think it was uh, two weeks ago. Uh, about a friend who approached me and tried to set me up. And now I'll give you the results of that situation. Fuck it, I'll give you the details to the minutia. Okay, so recap. A co-worker had approached me and said his wife's cousin was looking to date somebody. And I told my wife... I wouldn't set her up with anybody. There's no guy that I know that would be worth setting her up with. And then, at least he says, and then he thought of me. And I was immediately flattered. And uh, instinctually, my defenses go up. Like, well, okay, if it doesn't work out, then you gotta you got to work around this guy. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. it. If I don't put myself out there, then um, I stand to gain nothing. So... I said, all right, well, well, thank you. I'm flattered, and yeah, we'll, we'll see what. All right, I'll give it a shot. And uh, he's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll show you a picture of her on, on, on my break. And so he comes around and he shows me the picture, and the, t- the picture wasn't very telling. And to be honest with you, and, and, I, and I even told her this, and I even told her this that I don't like to put too much stake in photos anyway, because when you meet somebody in person, that's, that's the best impression you can get, at least by looks, you know? And I'd like to think that I'm maturing up to a point in my life where looks aren't everything, when, fuck it, that's bullshit. <laughs> uh, looks are a lot of things. If I want to wake up in the morning next to somebody and still be attracted to them, they got to look good to me. And it's not fair to be involved with somebody that you're not physically attracted to. So I'll be honest. Yeah, looks are important up to a point. But the picture wasn't very telling. At least my initial reaction was, well, yeah, she's all right. But I didn't want to shoot it down. And and then I, and then a part of me is torn like, fuck, I don't want to hurt his feelings. And I don't want to embarrass her. If he has a teller, yeah, he wasn't interested. Well, fuck, he only saw a photo? You know, what a fucking shallow asshole. But, okay, a part of me is a shallow asshole. And I did th- think initially, well, she's all right, but fuck it. I'll give it a shot anyway. I'm fucking lonely and horny. <laughs> but, uh, all right, so he gives me your number. I didn't want to seem desperate, so I didn't call her that night. And he asked me, even the next day, so did you call her? I'm like, no, dude. So I call her and leave her a voicemail. And then she responds back by text message, which immediately fucking irritates me. Like, why are you distancing yourself? Because initially you're asking to be set up, and now you're afraid to get personal. You're afraid to be 
like exposed. You're gonna shield yourself by socializing through text messages. And I'm like, and I was told she's 30 years old. And so I'm like, well, there's something fucking wrong here. And uh, I even exposed that fact to her. Like, okay, I feel awkward doing this. Like, let's get to know each other. Like, let's kind of expose ourselves. Let's kind of get to know each other. So by text messaging, is do you really feel that's the proper channel? I'm like, uh, that's not me. I don't want to do this fucking... Like, how do you get personal by immediately distancing? Like, it, it just doesn't make sense, and it's fucking irritating. And a lot of society is... That's how it is today, and that fucking irritates the shit out of me. And then I made the mistake of... Okay, I've seen her picture and then she feels vulnerable and so she wants to see a picture of me and i'm like well all right fuck it so here's here's my facebook page maybe you can find a little bit more revealing about me like my interests you know my last posts the, the fact i'm podcasting of course none of this information gets brought up all she says is you you don't have that many pictures which is fucking like set up that way by design if you want to get to know me, you're, you're, what, the information you require falls short of just only pictures. That's that's all you're interested in. Then then fucking awesome because then I, I you've revealed enough to me to know that fucking I'm not going to pursue this any further. Which is eventually what happened because uh, she wanted to. She made the mistake of saying, "Well." Tell me about yourself via fucking text message. And I'm like, well, wh why don't you fucking call me? I I've called you and you didn't reciprocate. And now you want to limit it to just fucking text messaging. That's fucking uh, way too much is going wrong here. And my OCD is kicking in and I'm already creating a picture in my mind. And then if we do fucking connect on Facebook. And I made the mistake of trying like forming a picture in my mind of what this person is like and how can I encapsulate a human being by looking at a fucking profile on, on Facebook, you know, and, and if she doesn't have anything of detail about her on the page, you know, and I've got plenty of details about me on my page. So I'm, I'm, so I put her on the spot and, and went straight forward. She asked to be set up. So she's looking to, date somebody so i asked her on a fucking date and all of a sudden all of her information is when she's unavailable and during the text messaging the next following days she does not reveal when she's in she's available in fact she's only telling me where when she's unavailable and i called her on it like i don't get it but it seems like you're only telling me when you're not available. Did you, you know, come to some conclusion by interacting by Facebook and saw something there you're not interested in? I'm like, I this whole back and forth via text message, it's it's not I'm not good at this. And it seems like you're only telling me when you're unavailable, you know. I don't know, but it seems like you, you don't want to go forward with this. So tell me if I'm wrong and she doesn't get it. I'm like, "Well, just call me and she says, I'll call you by this time if you're up late. And I'm like, well, I'll be up late and I'll be flexible and I'm available. So let me know. And she didn't call me. And I fucking took that as the final. Like, OK, if you're not going to pursue this, if you're not interested in me, fuck it. If you made a character judgment by Facebook without meeting me on a personal level, then you're nobody I want to be involved with anyway. And so I'm, I, I gotta be honest, I'm fucking thoroughly frustrated with this whole situation. Fucking dating has been bullshit in the last few years. And not to mention, now there's awkwardness with my coworker and I, you know. I've got resentments towards women, and I'm trying hard not to blame this guy. I mean, he's cool, and he didn't, he was only acting on good and positive impulses it just didn't work out and so i don't want to live on a shallow plane like i i can play the game to the point where f my penis gets attention but that's <laughs> i want a little bit more fulfilling in life i've i've had enough sex and i've avoided intimacy on a personal level i've avoided getting to know people 
by just partying and, and living on, on the shallow side of life. I, I want to get to know somebody and I want to reveal my inner thoughts and how my character works and the mechanics of my personality. And I want to mesh with someone else. I want to meet somebody who's going to compliment my life and, and vice versa. And it seems like the way the media is affecting the inner workings of relationships, like, like Facebook and networking and, and text messaging where the phone seems archaic, you know, I mean, how, how do I encapsulate myself in a fucking text message? How do I respond and tell you who I am in fucking like less than 140 characters? Like, do I really want to be self-conscious? Like, okay, is two sentences, three sentences too much? I already feel like I'm going overboard by responding with three sentences in a text message. Do, can I sum up my life in three sentences and and motivate a response? Am I, can I, what do I put in, in a text message to get her to be interested in me? And... <laughs> I don't get it. It's there's too much. It's, it's too fucking irritating. So. So I cut my losses before I get too invested, because even just a fucking shallow interaction, just a very limited interaction I had, um, I'm feeling lousy afterwards so imagine if i put a lot of effort in and time and i end up coming to the i end up coming to the conclusion that i was initially impressed up that initially impressed upon me and then i come to the conclusion that i didn't honor in the first place because i just didn't want to be alone how many fucked up relationships are out there because nobody has the balls to face up to how they truly feel. They just don't want to be alone and they're too scared. You know, I, I'm scared too. I, I'm, I honestly am. I'm fucking scared to be alone for the rest of my life, but you know what? It's better off than being fucking miserable with somebody just cause I'm afraid to be alone. All righty. And I think I'll end the show on that. But before I do, Cut to, cut to the rewind. And to recap, how to compete in the rewind contest, all you have to do is recognize what show number it comes from, tweet the show at S-O-S-W-I-T-H-W-A-M, connect with us on Facebook, or email us at S-O-S-W-I-T-H-W-A-M at yahoo.com. We'll get your address, and we'll mail you a t-shirt. That's all you've got to do. And now the rewind. So um, I want to get into uh, inspirations for me to have approached Marin to say, let's sit down in front of a fucking mic and act like we have conversation worth listening to. <laughs> As you were talking, I came up with this pitch. Okay. I wasn't really listening to the gist of what you were saying, but I'm kind of using your words to capitalize on them. Okay. That's that's a gift I have. That's a fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, we rely on promotion rather than attraction. So the prince, one of the principles for the Sink or Swim show is, is promotion, promotion rather than over attraction. attraction. <laughs> We're not college graduates. No, we are not. <laughs> I'm not even a high school graduate. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a GED, so fuck off. If there's a shortcut, but you know what? Let me say. Let if me there's say. a shortcut, I'll find it, and I did. <laughs> you go to get money out of the ATM, look in the trash receptacle next to you, and look for the highest readout of somebody's bank account. Like if you see like five hundred thousand dollars, grab that slip. Because there's no corresponding information to who that person is, and keep it in your pocket. Next time you approach a woman, you want to give her your number, you write it on that slip and just hand it to them as if it's a, a piece of scratch paper. 
And then the woman will be like, holy shit, this guy's got a lot of money in the bank. I'm not going to lose this number. And there you go, folks. That is this Wednesday's Rewind Show. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. For Ambrosio and Nigo Montoya, my name is Wes Rodriguez. Thank you for tuning in. What's your dream?